kick off our program today, I'd like to introduce Raj Verma, the CEO of Single Store. Hey, Bernard, how are you doing? I'm so lovely to have you with me today and, and join, join you for this exciting event. So please Thank tell you. us why you've been calling this a watershed moment in the database industry. What's the significance of what you're announcing today? Yeah, uh, firstly, thank you for that warm introduction. Uh, greatly appreciate it. It's good to see you. I hope you're uh, safe and well. Yeah, I'm superbly excited today. Um, you know, it's one of those days that uh, when everything just comes together in a beautiful, beautiful manner. Um, you know, I've been uh, a student of the art of data and technology and, you know, the heady mix of what the art of the possible is when you get your data strategy right. Um, and, and, you know, when you reflect back on it, and Bernard, you and I have spoken about this a number of times, the, the evolution of databases, which started with in probably the early to mid-70s with Oracle, um, the, the volumes and complexity of data in that era was very different. The, the size of the data was a lot smaller. The complexity, the data models were not as varied. And, um, and as the complexity and the variety and just the complex volumes of data increased, you started having databases which were OLAP or OLTP, because in the first generation of databases, there was one database. You either had Oracle or Informix or Sybase or DB2 or what have you. <clears throat> With that increase in variety, complexity, and volume, you started seeing the segregation or division of data into OLAP for analytics, and OLTP for transactions. And that's where you started seeing data warehouses coming up, different type of um, OLTP databases that started to come up because there wasn't a database that was built to manage the complexity and the volume and variety of data. Now, also within the OLAP swim lane and the OLTP swim lane, Bernard, you started having speciality databases, you know, for IoT, for streaming, for uh, whatever, mobile applications, for disposable applications, for XYZ analytics, right? So not only are companies right now struggling with the volume, size, variety, complexity of data, there is a new kind of struggle that the enterprises are having, which is the database sprawl within their own um, uh, enterprise. Whenever I talk to a CIO or a CEO even, and I say, hey, what database do you use? That's not even a question anymore because the answer is we at least have one of every. <laughs> so there are 30, 40, 50 databases. How can you effectively have a meaningful data strategy when you have 40 different databases? Right? But that is what people have gotten used to today. And the reason why I'm excited this morning is that we are unshackling the enterprise complexity of data architecture by saying that we have a no compromise database where you do not need 40 of them to be effective with your data strategy. And how are we doing this is the obvious question. Now, as I said, the volume and complexity of data rises. So what, is, uh, what are enterprises trying to solve for? How expensive is it for me to store my data in expensive storage locations? All right, mm -hmm. we thought about that. We said, all right, why don't we separate storage and compute so you can actually manage to store your data in the most economical um, storage location and still be able to query it. So today we announced separation of storage and compute. All right, I'm hearing an applause in my, in my head and I'm sure the single store crew, which is in the pub next door <laughs> watching it, is applauding. Um, and, and by the way, we are not the first ones to do it. A lot of people have done that. But right now we have it. And as this story unfolds, you'll realize how the sum of the parts is, uh, sorry, the, the whole is a lot more than the sum of the parts. Now, with the separation of storage and compute, which we had the internal code name of bottomless, uh, because it's endless, limitless. Uh, now, you marry that with the point-in-time recovery feature that we have just announced. A lot of companies have, or a lot of technologies have point-in-time recovery, but we have what we call limitless point-in-time recovery. So point-in-time recovery really is the time machine that you can go back 
in any point in time and uh, start from there, right? You restore or recover um, your, your environment from there. Most companies have six months, two years, four years. There is a limit to it. With the separation of storage and compute and point in time restore, it's limitless. It is a limitless time machine that you can go back in time with. To the best of my knowledge, there isn't another company that, that, that does that. Now let's go a little further while we are unshackling the enterprises of the complexity of the database sprawl right now. Right now, if you're an application developer, um, you essentially have a data-intensive application, a data-intensive application which naturally, as the name suggests, requires a lot of complexity of data, query speeds, ingestion, uh, fast-changing, fast-moving data. Uh, you want to do analytics, then you uh, look for a column store, so an analytical database. But in that data-intensive application, there is also a need for transactional capability. Oh, then you go need uh, OLTP because you need row store. Um, and then, oh, by the way, we need uh, full text search. Oh, let's go get Elastic, right? Um, all right, so that you get Elastic. And then I need a graph database. Uh, all right, let's go find one of the 3,000 graph databases uh, that you have, right? Now, before you know it, you are really trying to manage one data-intensive applications with four uniquely different data model or databases fit for a data model, all right? That is, that is tremendous complexity, tremendous complexity, right? Now, what we have just announced is our patented, what we call universal storage. So uh, if you're an application developer, which I know you have been in the past, you do not have to worry about which data model goes where. The system will allow and determine that on your behalf. So if it's an analytical workload, it goes to the column store. If it's application, it's a row store. Or if it's full text search, wherever that data model needs to reside. All you have to do is solve your enterprise's problem. Super exciting. Yeah, and by is, the way, this is... yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, this is very exciting. And, 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 and we also have the modern way of doing databases. I mean, which is the number one lock-in company that you know in databases? We all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> they made billions of dollars by locking you in, and they're further locking you in by announcing that you put your database ERP on their cloud. That's not modern. That's not what the database industry needs. What we are offering today is a credit-based pricing. Consume what you need. When you're not using it, you pause it. When you want to use it again, you resume it. That is how databases will be consumed going forward. And this is why we call it internally a no-compromise database. And uh, uh, I am superbly excited because I do think this is the advent of the third um, generation of databases, which is the no-compromise low complexity database, which gives the power to the user and not to the vendors. So what new and exciting use cases do you see coming from these new capabilities? A tremendous uh, amount of use cases. And you know, we've got you know, hundreds of customers which are using us in very, very unique manner. Um, you know, ride sharing companies for real time congestion pricing, uh, so where you then can decide whether you want to um, take that surge pricing or not. That is, again, power to the consumer, right? Um, and uh, they tried every other database uh, to do it. They couldn't, because really, if you come to think of it, right, let's, let's talk about this a little more. What, do you, what makes a database fast? What makes a database fast is typically how you manage the storage. You take Snowflake, which has taken the oxygen out of the room, right? Uh, in the database market, really, and some really pompous statements made by their executives. Um, the, the fact of the matter is they have a two-layer storage model, all right? Disk and object store. We fundamentally, at the architectural level, have a three-layer storage model. Memory, disk, and object store. That is what makes us fast. That's what gives us unprecedented speed in addition to everything else. The 
the possibilities that, uh, that unfolds for um, you, you application developers are limitless, absolutely limitless. My favorite use case, you know, because uh, this afternoon we are celebrating and one of my favorite coaches in college basketball said that, you know, you know you've had a good day when you learn a lot, you laugh a lot, and you cry a bit, right? And you do that over uh, a number of days and weeks and you ultimately change the world and you, you achieve the impossible. Uh, my favorite example is Thorn, which uh, <clears throat> is a, a nonprofit organization which, um, uh, which essentially aids in stopping child trafficking. And if someone tells me that low latency is not important, uh, I do think it is. If it can save even one child's life, I think it's extremely, extremely important. And those who say that low latency is not important is because they can't do it, because this is a very, very deliberate choice that you make. Are you going to put lipstick on a pig, or are you going to fundamentally change the world of data. And uh, you know the choice we made, Bernard. Very good. So what makes this really truly unique for you? Um, all the features that I mentioned, as I said, uh, the whole is a lot more than the sum of the parts. Uh, we mm -hmm. are you know, uniquely, uniquely positioned uh, to, to arrest or even eliminate the database sprawl. Uh, in fact, I was talking to a customer yesterday, and they're a very, very large security company, enterprise security company. And, um, you know, this is uh, hot off the press, and you're the first one that I'm sharing this with outside of my internal crew. They retired, Bernard, 400 instances of Postgres and 400 instances of Elastic with, wait for it, 26 instances of single store. So 400 Postgres, 400 Elastic, gone. 26 instances of single store, right? And imagine how much complexity has been taken out. And by the way, four times the performance, right? And they, I, I think uh, my marketing crew is right here, and um, I, I, I think it's what, 170% um, improvement in total economic impact. Those numbers are surreal, just surreal numbers. Uh, though that's what I'm really excited about, right? What I'm excited about, look, I'm an immigrant. I came to this country 16 years ago, <clears throat> and I was not an economic immigrant, of course. You know, I'm a computer science engineer. I had a great life outside of um, the States. Why I came here was because looking at America from the outside was, that's where you've got to go to change the world. Uh, and, and I came here because, you know, for the last 16 years, I've woken up every morning and felt that I've changed the world in just a small manner for the better. And uh, you continue to do that over 16 years, and hopefully uh, you make a dent in the data universe. And um, I couldn't have asked for a better crew to do it with. Um, and um, our mission is to make a dent in the data universe. Um, and, um, and, and I think that's what we have started uh, the process of today, and it's taken us a while. And, uh, and we are just getting started. Very good. So wonderful. Thank you so much for Thank all the news for the industry context as well and how this is changing what is actually possible with data. Mm -hmm.